Hello, and welcome to Crypto Exposed. Okay, guys, got another interview here from King Solomon on behalf of Genfinity, and this one is with Jim Nazir of Acoa, which I've actually done a video on them before, so you'll be familiar with them. They're basically a health data company, and they want to basically revolutionize the healthcare industry. And so they're utilizing the Hedera network to do this. And I really like this company. And this was one of the things that I spoke to with you guys before. I said, you know, the great thing about this technology, put the money to the side for one second. Yes, all this stuff is obviously adding to utility and adding to the value of HBAR, but it's actually going to better your personal life as well. It can actually better your life in terms of how your health is managed and handled your data and stuff like that and so it's not just good from a money perspective it's good from just a life and personal perspective as well and that's what i really like about crypto technology so i've got this interview here um, as always i'm not going to play the video for copyright reasons but i have bullet pointed some of the main points that have been made and i just want to address these so as i said we've got jim nazir here who is the ceo of acoa and I'm going to get into some of the things that he was talking about. And one of the things that he said about Hadira, really, really great stuff to hear, to be honest with you. And this will show you, it's not just me saying this kind of stuff. You're hearing it from the people who are in big industries who are using the network, what they think of Hadira. So first and foremost, um, he was just basically asked about problems in traditional healthcare. And Jim basically said, one of the main problems with health data right now is that it's siloed, which basically means it's not all in one system. So you couldn't just go to one system and pull all of your healthcare data, right? It's basically in many different forms, in many different places. And so that's basically a bit of an issue, right? Like it's a bit of a thing where it's fractured in a way, right? Because it's not all just readily available, which of course is a problem. And so many people aren't really used to accessing their healthcare data, right? But the thing is, we're in a day and age now where, you know, we have smartphones, right? And a lot of things that we can get is at our fingertips at this point. So one of the points that he's making here is, why can't we have that for our healthcare data? Which I think is a great point. I think that is completely valid. In this day and age, I don't think there's any reason as to why our healthcare data shouldn't be just readily available at this stage. Like we're in a complete internet age. Everything is online it would make sense for that to be the case with your healthcare data. So I think that's a really good point to make just in general. And so you can see here where the gap is that they're trying to fill with their purpose, with their use case, right? Completely makes sense. So after that, he was basically saying how there's huge value to our healthcare data. And the problem with that is it's currently being used without our consent. Again, this is where decentralized identification, things like that, right? People wanting to take control of their identity and their data because you've heard about all this before, right? Like there's certain things where if there's an app out and stuff like that and they say, if you're not paying for the product, you are the product, right? Because what it is is that they're letting you use the product for free, but that's because they're getting all your data and then selling it on to third parties. So there's things like that where People don't like this age where people can get all your information and your data and be selling it on. They want it a bit more private, right? And so this is what he's talking about. And especially with your healthcare data, yes, because people can now start coming to you trying to sell you certain things like medication and stuff like that. And you never know, like if this is getting into the wrong hands, people could be trying to sell you something that's not even legitimate, right? You could get like a con man who comes and says, hey, I'm aware you've got some kind of medical condition. Well, here's these tablets that you can take and, you know, this will miraculously cure you. And, you know, people who are maybe in a very desperate situation, they might be willing to try anything, right? And they might start throwing their money at this kind of product thinking it's going to help them, but they're just being conned. So, you know, there's that kind of concern with data privacy. And so one of the big questions Jim was asking, which is what I've said earlier, is why isn't the data available to ourselves? Why haven't we got this kind of data readily available for us? You know, people are able to sell our data. It's being sent to third parties and stuff like that without our consent. So why can't we actually have it readily available for ourselves? Why can't we have this information through an app on our phone or that kind of thing, right? Completely agree. That makes perfect sense. 
So then King Solomon asked, why Hadira? Okay. So Jim basically said that they look at Hadira as computational trust. So they was talking about how they could basically give this mass stored data to like a third party to be the, the overseer of this information. So for example, they could give it to like Amazon, for example, right? But the problem they were saying with that kind of thing is like Amazon could be susceptible to hacks. And I was also saying like it wouldn't really be a good idea to have a huge corporation like that to be the overseer or like the handler of this mass invaluable data right like you wouldn't want a huge corporation to be like the overseer or handler of this kind of data it's too important it's too valuable right you'd want it to be decentralized really where there's not a huge third party like that that has that kind of control or who could sell it at will that kind of thing so really they would want it to be somewhere that is decentralized the other thing that was also said was in regards to like if you had an accident or something like that you know, you could go to the doctors and readily have your information available. So rather than them asking you questions, you could just pull up the app and it'll show you like, yep, this is the medication I'm on. This is my healthcare status. You know, this is any kind of issues that I've had in the past or whatever. And I'll have all that information just readily accessible, right? That's obviously going to help speed up the process. The other thing that was said by Jim in regards to picking Hadira was that Hadira is easily the best option. They said it's fast, it can scale and it's cheap, right? And the last thing he said in regards to this, which I thought was really important, was Jim said they wanted a network that will last. He said they wanted a network that will last. Now, I've said this a few times in my videos, guys. In the future, I do think there will be many cryptos that become extinct. I don't think all cryptos will survive. And it seems that Jim is very clued onto that right he sees the future and i think most people can see it because there's a lot of these cryptos that are out there that serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever right it's so easy to go out and create a cryptocurrency so a lot of these cryptos when like regulation comes through and stuff like that a lot of them are not going to make the cut but when you're looking at hedera and everything that hedera is doing and all the partnerships that they have I think it's obvious that Hedera is going to be one of the cryptos that stay and stand the test of time, in my opinion. I think that's quite clear to me. I feel very confident that Hedera will be here long term. I have no doubt about that. And Jim seems to agree. So it was great to hear him say that. And I think that's something that you guys really need to think about. Because, look, I know you guys get caught up with price right now. But I'm telling you this. Some of these cryptos that you're seeing that have made good price action... They may not even be here in the future. Like Pepe, I do not think Pepe will be here long term, right? So while some people have made a good amount of money in Pepe, well, cool, good for you, congratulations. I do not think that crypto will be here long term. And that's why I feel comfortable with Hedera because I feel that HBAR will be here long term. I'm not going to be worrying and thinking, oh, it's turned around and collapsed. Oh, the founders have been involved in fraud. Like, I've not got any kind of concerns about anything like that happening. And that's why I feel so confident. And then he also just said Hedera is the best in its class with regards to the things that he mentioned in terms of it being fast, can scale, and is cheap. So I completely agree, of course. Um, I thought this was a real great interview. There was a bit more added to it, but these were the main points that I really wanted to address. So if obviously you do want to watch the full interview, Hedera have reposted the interview on their profile. So you can check out Hedera's X profile and you can see the interview there. It is a good interview. I have covered the main points that I would like to address and that are relevant to Hedera. So you've got that and just a gist of what they're trying to do. So real great interview here, real good hearing what Jim had to say. And again, real good hearing what some developers think about Hedera. And this is what I'm trying to say to you guys. Everything that people say about Hedera who are using it, they think it's great. I think, in my opinion, HBAR has a very bright future ahead of itself. And so I'm feeling very comfortable right now. I am not worried about what the current price action is. I'm just thinking long term, Hedera looks like it has a very promising future ahead of itself. So I will wait to see that come to fruition. But what do you guys think? Jim Nazir talking about Hedera on behalf of Akoa. Do you like the sound of this interview? Is there anything in this interview that you heard in particular that makes you feel very confident about HBAR? Do you agree with the comments that Jim made about HBAR? 
Or do you not like this? Is there anything in this interview that you didn't like? Is there any points that I've made here or Jim has made that you disagree with? And if you do disagree with them, why do you disagree with them? Or do you just not think this is going to be anything that adds any value to HBAR long term? Let me know your thoughts, guys. I'd be interested to hear. Thank you very much for watching this. If you did like it, please remember to drop a comment, like, and subscribe. But until next time, take care.